Hello guys, this is Respectful Dave. If you're new to this channel, my name is David. I've been playing chess for over a decade now. I'm a candidate master, but now I'm focusing all my efforts into teaching chess. That being said, let's learn from Paul Morphy. First of all, who's Paul Morphy? Paul Morphy was the first person to understand opening principles. David, what are the opening principles? The opening principles are number one, occupy the center. Number two, developing your knights and bishops. And number three, castling. Your ultimate goal in the opening is castling. You, you have to move pawns to take out your bishops. You have to move your knight in order to castle. And finally, of course, you, you, you would castle. With the white pieces, of course, we have Paul Morphy. And with the black pieces, we have Charles Le Carpentier, who are two players that used to play back almost 200 years ago, which is pretty incredible. And you're going to see why I'm showing you a game played almost 200 years ago. Last thing, why is white lacking a rook what happened to the rook well paul morphy used to be so so good that he used to give odds to his opponent so before this game paul said hey charles i'm very good i'm not gonna play with this rook so take it and charles was like okay i'm gonna take that rook i'm gonna beat you but we will see paul morphy opened up the game with pawn to e4 pawn to e5 now these pawns are occupying the center very quickly. Knight f3, knight c6, developing your knights. So, so far, so good. It's not like black is the worst. I know that by now, everyone's hating on black because it's not Paul Morphy, but black was pretty good. It's not It's not like black was a beginner. Black was probably one of the best at the time. So, knight c6, and in this position, Paul Morphy played with d4. So, Paul Morphy opens up the center as quickly as possible. He takes d4, bishop c4. Now, David, why did Paul Morphy not take back the pawn? Good question. Paul Morphy said, if I trade this knight, black will take back. Sorry, not that. Black will take back. I will take back. Let's move that. And now we get this position, which is fine. The queen is a little bit more active. We still occupy all of the four, four central squares, right? But it has a problem. And I'm going to ask you a question. Who is happier with trades? What is a trade? Who is happier with pieces getting off the board? You see, if every single piece if you trade every single piece for another equal piece, so pawn, 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 pawn. If, you, if we do that all over, like for all the pieces, black is going to have an extra rook, right? Because Paul Morphy decided to give a rook at the beginning of the game. So Paul Morphy wants to avoid trading pieces as much as possible because Paul Morphy is down a rook. In short, Paul Morphy is going to keep pieces over the board to claim that he will be able to use them better than his opponent. At the same time, also Paul Morphy thinking, well, I would rather developing an, a bishop and activating it than taking a pawn and that's just a pawn. I mean, it's it's not as important as activity. Taking the pawn would have been a little bit greedy, a little bit materialistic. That's what we call it in chess. So bishop c4, developing your bishop, and bishop b4, played by Charles. Now, this is not a big mistake, but it's starting to go into the greedy mindset that black played or had during this game. Bishop b4 is a check. That's true. And many people would get scared. Oh no, my, my king is in check. But in reality, after c3, which is what Paul Morphy played, everything's pretty good. I mean, now c3, this bishop has to move again, or black has to do something about this situation here. You don't want to lose a bishop for nothing. And black took. But this is what Paul Morphy wanted. Because now this pawn is taking, taking. That's um, Maybe black is thinking that's good for him. But actually, it's good for, for white. You're opening lines. In the future, this diagonal might oh sorry not that one a1 h8 the grand diagonal one of the two grand diagonals in fact the other one is this one it might become vulnerable in the future paul morphy castled black took once again a little bit of a mistake and bishop takes b2 paul morphy is happy to to give up pawns in order to get activity and if we take a look at this position we pause for a second we're gonna ask several questions so in chess you have to ask the right questions such as whose king is more secure if we ask that question, then you're going to pretty much reach the correct answer, which is Paul Morphy's king is more secure. Paul Morphy's king is surrounded by pawns. Um, it's in the corner. And most importantly, it's not in the middle. Black's king is in the middle, which is very likely to get checked or even worse, checkmated. Second question, whose pieces are more active? Well, black has a knight and a bishop out. But white has a bishop, a knight and a bishop, another bishop on b2, out. So white is winning in activity. On top of that, we can start thinking about more concrete, more direct things. For example, bishop takes b2 creates a threat. Bishop takes g7. 
in order to 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 defend this black has to make a passive move which is generally how it works in chess you make an attacking move your opponent might play with a passive move or if your opponent plays an attacking move you have to make the passive move so bishop takes b2 is already kind of putting black in a in a tough tough spot probably black has to sacrifice material back in order to survive this game but black made a very very bad and depressing move black played bishop f8 david why is this such a horrible move this bishop was once on f8 and it went down to b4 do you remember well now the bishop went back to f8 so it's as if black played one two so black just wasted two moves so this bishop is back in the original place do you want your bishops all the way in the original place no you want your bishops out active this is very very passive active passive remember that in this position paul morphy is already doing quite good given that he's down a rook and played e5 claiming that now black cannot develop this bishop black wanted to move this pawn and develop this bishop but after e5 paul morphy is saying hey if you play d6 you're gonna have to be careful about my rook on f1 and if my rook on f1 becomes alive or becomes active let's say then you're gonna be in trouble because then i'm not gonna only have three pieces active i'm gonna have four pieces active and then five maybe and then maybe the queen so paul morphy is already thinking about how do i optimize my pieces how do i get them to play black played pawn to d6 uh, charles thought well if i don't get my pieces out i'm gonna lose so i might give this a try but already it's a little bit difficult for for black rookie one this is a very scary move good move by paul morphy this rook is preparing to to use the open file so it's not an open file yet because there's something yeah this wouldn't be an open file because there's a pawn in the file but this pawn might disappear in the future more importantly this is what we call an x-ray because if you think this pawn will disappear then you're pretty much x-raying the, the black king if this pawn didn't exist which will be the case soon this king would be in check and of course if your king is in check and in the middle you're in trouble black played d takes e5 knight takes e5 by paul morphy good move now this knight is going to move anywhere that this knight moves it's going to be check because of the rook so black is not very happy about that and in fact in this position it's already pretty difficult black tried queen takes d1 which is not the worst it's not that bad but it does it does require precise calculation from charles in this case in this position paul morphy did something called zwischenzug or intermediate move however you want to call it normally in chess you have obvious moves right so for example if in this position before black took back and white took right so it's very natural that when someone takes something you take back and in many case in many cases that's the best move in many cases you have something called this vision took, which is what paul murphy did in this case so the obvious move is taking back your queen right and maybe knight takes and bishop takes and then well this is a game in this position, white has a has better way of doing this. And that's bishop takes f7. This is check, so the queen cannot take, or the queen cannot save herself. And black has to do something about this. In fact, black has only one way to have a clear advantage in this position. And that's king d8. In which case, Paul Murphy was planning to take back the, the queen, and now this is even a better position, right? But, in this position, black played king e7, which is a big mistake. Once again, in this position, it looks like you're going to take back. And th this is actually worse because you're going to think, oh man, I'm losing a bishop. In this position, Paul Murphy was aware of the whole board and played the brilliant second vision suk. So second intermediate move in the row, knight g6. David, why is this so special? Can't the queen take the rook over here? Well, you're going to notice the computer won't let me. And it's not because the computer is broken. It's because this is double check. So the rook and the knight are giving a check to the king and the, the only way to get out of a double check is by avoiding normally you have three ways to get out of a check avoiding blocking and capturing in this position you can only avoid because if you if you try to take the knight the same thing will happen you're still in check so in this position black should have played something like king d6 and accept that black the white is going to get the rook in this position black should have played king d6 but instead Black blundered terribly with king takes f7. And this is a very big blunder. So white is not, obviously not going to take the queen. White has a very good 
move in this position. Can you find it? Paul Morphy manages to play a third division sug in a row with knight takes h8. David, why is this so great? Can the king go to e8? No. The rook is occupying all the e, e both e, all e6, e7, e8 squares. So all these squares are not possible to escape to. What about f6? Is that possible? Nope. The bishop from b2 is occupying that square. What about g6? Well, that's the magical thing about this this knight move. It's it's so good. This knight is both checking the king and avoiding the king from escaping to g6. So the king has no escape squares, and most importantly, the king is in check mate because the, the king is in attacked and the king has nowhere to go. So that's checkmate. Polymorphy's games are excellent to learn chess. I recommend checking his games. Even though they were played around 200 years ago, they're still so rich and you can learn a lot. Thank you very much for watching this video. You should check out my social media. I upload short form content and entertaining content in general. You should check out my streams as well, where you can drop by and say hello and I will say hello back to you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.